morning. Today I'm talking with you intentionally as the autistic woman that I am. This is not a personal tragedy. I'm cool with my brain. You are welcomed. We are all loved as we are. We are all in community. But in my experience, it's not that often that neurodiverse humans are directly addressed in normal shared spaces. And this can be confusing for some of us. So hello, neurodiverse faces that I do and don't recognize. I am pleased to know that however we may experience the world, we are all on this road together. In the spirit of inclusivity, I've been looking at Isaiah 55.1. When the prophet invites everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, without money, without price. Come to the waters. The prophet Isaiah encourages all of us to accept an invitation into the ever-present, uncontainable waters of the loving and creative Holy Spirit. We are invited to embrace and share these waters. And as vessels of these waters, we are invited to consider how to share them how to spill these waters toward alleviating ourselves and our loved ones of oppressive shadows. How to spill these waters as resistance. Unlike the Linton images we've been contemplating this year, I want to offer a different slant on the full to the brim metaphor. Picture a cup you've been using to hold your favorite drink. When I imagine my cup of coffee I've been sipping, I immediately think, well, it's only half empty. People tell me this makes me negative, but I'm looking on the bright side. To borrow from Mel Brooks and Marty Feldman and Young Frankenstein, it could be worse. It could be rainy. And I've always loved the rain anyway. One of many stereotypes of autistic humans that I fulfill is black and white thinking. Except my black and white thinking is not the stereotypical either or. It's coexistence, ever presence, shadow as constant as light. It is impossible for me to see the light without the shadows. But that does not mean that I believe we should live in them. When I imagine a cup full to the brim, I think, I'm going to spill it. It'll be too hot or too cold. I'll make someone slip. And on and on. Not so positive. But every single one of us carries our own full cup right now. And that's a lot to carry. In the last couple of years, our experience and meaning of time itself seems to have changed. Too little, too much, too close, too far away. We have been isolated. We've lost loved ones. We have seen illness. We have been ill. We have feared and prayed for our lives. Compassion fatigue is rampant. We share these dark experiences, but they don't even include our additional personal struggles. I wish I could say our cups were only half full. And now, again, as lawmakers are debating daylight savings time, (laughs) more news comes to the forefront of our horrified and exhausted world. We are faced with a reality of senseless war and images capturing suffering and disruption of millions of lives of fellow loved ones overseas. What are we supposed to do with this? I keep thinking about this event in Bavaria in 2014, when collective love and creativity disrupted intended hate and violence from the outside. 
a time when the Holy Spirit was so clearly in motion. Frustrated with yearly marches held by neo-Nazis, the small town Wunsiedel came together and played an aggressively non-violent joke on the unappreciated far-right intruders. Individuals and businesses of the town sponsored the marchers in a walkathon, putting the neo-Nazis in the unwitting position of raising money for a program in conflict with their own cause. Some welcoming and humorous signs included thanking the neo-Nazis for their donations and generosity. This townwide practical joke even included at least one table of bananas. A small spill of holy waters in history, but a flood of love and creative expression over vitriol and hatred. These waters, the Holy Spirit, can't be contained. As we saw last week, an employee of Russian state media, the only media currently allowed in Russia, held up a sign on camera saying, no war, stop the war. Don't believe the propaganda. They tell lies here. Thank God she survived, she survived hours of interrogation and was allowed to return home. Her love for her people and resistance to suppression of free expression, even for a moment, is one more spill of holy waters in our current history. As a vessel who could not contain the holy waters, she shared light in the face of shadow. Even under our own shadows, the Holy Spirit whispers, reminding us that our individual cups full of stressors and pain are not the waters we are invited to. Don't deny that cup. That cup is real. Just please don't drink from it. Light comes when we allow ourselves to imagine old and new ways to resist shadows with love and creativity. From art forms to finding new ways to connect with others. Love and creativity are resistance. And all we need to do is spill the same holy waters that beckon us. We don't have to be bathed in light to be welcome to the waters. As Isaiah assures us, we may come without price. There is no prerequisite. We are all invited to the waters of the boundless Holy Spirit, waters that are never still. The Spirit knows each of us, each of our hopes and capabilities, our outlets for creativity, and it patiently persists, ready for us to accept the invitation to come to these waters and to understand ourselves as the vessels we are. These waters never leave us and cannot be contained, keeping us always full to the brim, always spilling, always resisting shadows with light and love. As long as we remember ourselves as full to the brim, we can't help but spill a little light, a little love now and again. And that's a blessing. That is us empowered by the light God begs us to share. When we affirm for ourselves that self-care is a valid need to thrive, when we choose to laugh in response to an unpleasant encounter, when we send octopus videos to friends we know are having a hard time, we are full to the brim of the holy waters that run through us all, constantly expanding our worlds with loved ones and new and exciting ways to express our love. So let's tell our loved ones how much we love. Let's smile at the stranger who acts like we're in their way. Let's continue to ask ourselves what we can do in the face of poisonous shadows. We may, may feel this as coming in small spills, but together with our fellow loved ones here and elsewhere, 
with the help of the soul-sustaining waters of the Holy Spirit, we are capable of a flood. Amen.